Should we say to bring, ladies and gentlemen, a joyous show? Thank you to Boy Sports, our principal sponsors, and of course, sponsors of Birmingham City Football Club and MA French Polishing. I hope we get that right this week. Uh, along with Accessory Blues, our good friends down at Borsia Labour Club and the Garrison Coffee Company, and of course, Image Cleaning. Now, um, the Blues go and score five on Saturday. They couldn't quite make the six. Oh, if they only had it done. If they only, only had it done. You'd be, you'd be witnessing. Well, a terrible view right now, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I could describe it as, as a terrible view. So, a welcome talk show then. Uh, welcome along this week, the one and only Adam Wilkes. Good evening, everybody. And Mr. Rogue himself, Paul Adams. Hello, everybody. OK? Mark Adams, I'm in. I've only got one job. <laughs> Uh, I've only just got back, actually. Paul Hipkiss, uh, a.k.a. Mr Sheen. Welcome along, my friends. Evening, all. And, of course, one and only Mrs Brown. Good evening. <laughs> and for myself, good evening. And uh, we're going to talk about fives tonight, ladies and gentlemen, fives, because we only went and scored five. That's that's that's, 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 that's that many. That many. So, right, OK, I've just come back from Paul. Had a great weekend there with my son, uh, Luke, all the way down there in Dorset. And um, I'm certainly going to go down when we play when we play Bournemouth and, and stay down there and uh, have the crack. So uh, that's on the cards. Now, Paul, we scored five. We did. It was... We, uh, we only scored five. We looked good as well. We were better than good, Nick. We were. Per- it was more or less perfect. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I've only seen the ten-minute highlight, Paul. I must admit, because I was there. Yeah. And Paul, I went. You know, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes the family. Sometimes they've got to come first, don't they? Oh yeah, absolutely. But I don't use the word perfect very often. But that was if, as close as near as damn it to perfect as you're going to get from. I mean, look at Jong. Look at Jong. He's unplayable. Yeah. I mean, I don't. And, in my time, scored, I don't. I don't. We've got um, over the park. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with Chong. Sorry, I'm buttoning a little bit. <laughs> Gentlemen, tonight we're a little bit excited, shall we say, because we scored five. We should have scored five. Does anyone remember the, the opposing fans applauding one of our players going off? Oh, incredible. Long time. That's brilliant, thing. Yeah. Um, Sportsmanship. Yeah. Uh, I, I did see the other photograph on Facebook, though, the, uh, with, the, with the lady giving the gesture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was that Hogan second? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, guess next week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
platoon coming up. Uh, firstly, uh, to the lovely Auntie Linda, who's been struck down with a horrible, horrible COVID. And uh, also my son, Adam. He's also got it. Um, golly, there's, there's quite a few people. It's, it's yeah. certainly not... Um, don't care whether you've had your jabs or not. Had your jabs, mate. You're going to get it, you're going to get it, and that's, that's it. Not, yeah. The guys at XSC Blues have had a bad uh, had a bad week as well, didn't they? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all State Portland Post, yeah. Oh, yeah. Top yeah. of the chair, we're going to pay special respects to uh, Carol. Carol Sangan, who uh, won this morning's prize, I believe, Chris, no, yeah? It was, a, it was Carol Ann Yardley. Yeah. Uh, she, she she, Carol Blues. and Caroline Ann Yardley. Yeah, she won the prize, Uh but also, she did message me afterwards to say that um, could we say a special, um, a special. I don't know what the word is really, but apparently a, fa- a father died on um, on Friday, so I was a bit bit gobsmacked at that. Uh, I believe his name was Dennis. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Big blues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awful. So uh, keep right on up there and ever, my good friend, and. Yeah. Uh, just wrap your arms around everybody else that's up there will go on with you. So, yeah. always sad, always sad, mm, horrible. Always. Can I just start up? Sorry, can I just butt in for a second? Uh, I think uh, they're trying to get um, fans to clap uh, for, for Dennis on uh, the game on tomorrow on the 78th minute. If 78th you can. minute, yeah. yeah. And um, just to say, say um, she wants to send love to a partner, Craig. So, bless her. Yeah, it's a horrible, 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 horrible. Um, but, you know, at some junction, I know we've all got to go that mortal coil away, but it's never easy and never nice and never nice to bring that news to anybody. And, of course, never nice for the families and, and friends involved. So uh, our thoughts are all with you. Yeah. Now then, with the show. OK, uh, Mark, we got five. I know. I can't believe it. I'm just absolutely stunned. I wish I was there, to be honest. I'm going on Saturday against Barnsley, but I wish I was there on, you know, against Luton. That would have been some hell of a party coming back. Yeah. yeah, you know, <laughs> I can, uh, oh. I've got to back. Bro, no, look, look at that. In the car on the way back. Look at the state of that. Oh, huh? what a tramp. So, <laughs> how can you represent? How can you represent Tilton Talk? Well, stopped at McDonald's oh. on coffee, and it's, uh, so I, was, I, I usually have a straw with my coffee, but the plastic ones are thinner than the, the cardboard <laughs> ones. So somebody shoved the cardboard straw in for, in for me, straight to the bottom of the thing, went to take some of the coffee out, obviously couldn't you know, suck on the coffee, so then went to yunk it back upwards again, and it, and it all went all over me. So there you are. <laughs> Just going back on to Saturday a minute, how much difference have Woods and Chong made in the middle to us? Just incredible. So, so much creativity, isn't that? It's, it's yeah. so different. You know. But I want to give him. A, I want to give him a special mention, Woods, as well, because I think he's been outstanding so far. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. He's been like Mark Ward, hasn't he? We've said it before, but he's like a Mark Ward type of player, and we haven't had yeah. that for a while. Probably since Barry Ferguson. I've seen a yeah, few yeah. comments that have said that, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Most yeah. From me. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, 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 you know, where did you say we would end up at Christmas? What was your guess? I don't think I did actually, um, but I'm going to say ninth. I picked nine without, as well. You said without before that performance on Saturday. Before <laughs> that performance on Saturday, I probably would have said about twelfth. Right. Yeah. So that performance has changed your perspective. Oh, you, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm over the moon as well. Hogan's off the mark, and you know that was mm. our main worry, wasn't it? A goal scoring striker. But I said last week, didn't I? Once he gets that first one, they're like bussies. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if we keep playing like that, and we consistently get to that level every game then who knows where we could go? Because that was, you know, form that was good enough to, to be in the top six, wasn't it? But it's all about consistency now. You know, you've got to yeah. do it week out. And at this level, with the, with the intensity and the games, one after the other, it's very difficult to do that. But, you know, you take a scrappy 1-0 win and an ugly performance as much as a 5-0 away in this division, don't get me wrong. I mean, no doubt Absolutely. we'll have one, a few of them. But, you know, if we keep playing like we did Saturday on a consistent basis... Um, you know, and we stay injury free um, and suspension free, and we can keep our strongest eleven. Because I think, apart from maybe arguably average in goal, that was our strongest eleven that started the game on Saturday. That was great of uh, uh, Lee Bayer as well to come out and, and say that, that was the best performance under any team that he's ever seen as a manager. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Managed, yeah. Keep them to be all another foot taller. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's a game that will live long in the memory, and that strong performance for me as well. You know, I think back to Lingard's debut. I think back to Do Gary against Southampton. You know, the mm. outstanding individual displays that we've seen in the past 
for me, it was up there with them sort of moments, wasn't it? And them sort of games. He was just unbelievable. He was an 11 out of 10. Well, I want to yeah. say about Woods as well. He's quietly going about doing his job. Um, yeah. No fuss, no drama. Chong is obviously doing well as well, but he seems to be a bit more of the poster boy kind of thing. He's going in front of the cameras a bit more. But mm. yeah, Woods understayed, doing his job and uh, fair play to him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Think, oh, good. Think... Sorry, sorry. sorry. I was going to say, I think the credit to, I think um, Gary Gardner's been brilliant since day one this season. Gary Gardner, I mean, that was a world yeah. of a cup, wasn't it? And obviously he was yeah. left out. Yeah. He was left out on Saturday and, and, and obviously it's debatable whether you go with Sonic or Gardner, obviously with Woods, but but we've mm -hmm. got depth, you know, we've got Chong going off, we've got Sanchez coming on, you oh, know, yeah. we've got, we got, we got um, I mean, Anike come on and got a goal and, you yeah, know, nice, we, yeah. we've got, we, we have got a bit of strength in depth there as well, you know. We've got players yeah, that have um, I heard a pre-match interview uh, with Boya that he said the only reason he left Gardner was out was just for rotational basis with Sonic. Yeah. Um, obviously, he wants to not avoid injuries and everything for the rest of the season, so they're going to try and swap them out as and when and not risk anybody's injury. Yeah, but but you're always going to get a high level of performance when they're competing against each other to start. Yeah. You know, we've got, yeah, competition yeah. That's what you we've got competition for places now. You're not guaranteed your shirt every game, no matter who you are in that team. Maybe Chong, arguably, obviously, but you wouldn't leave Chong out of the team. But I'm on about in general, like the rest of the lads. We've got a good player. I mean, that can... Going back good to the go... in the position. Well, I was going to say, Paul, going back to the keeper, I think Sadok has done really well as well. So, yeah, so we've got two, two good goalies on our books now. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So and, it's, and... Looking, it's looking good. Yeah, and yeah. how good, how good, how good is Jeremy Bader at left wing back? Sorry, Paul. Oh yeah, yeah. Jeremy Would Bader, you have the squad we've had for a long time. I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say certainly the best on paper and obviously on the pitch as well after Saturday. Since probably Chris Uton's season, to be honest. There's cohesion yeah. there now. I think we didn't have that before. We had a lot of good players that weren't bonding and gelling together, and mm -hmm. I think we've got that cohesion now with under Bowyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Start to believe now. Should we start to dream and think, you know, or or should we just be cautious? <laughs> I, I think I'm going to. Sorry, I'm going to err on the side of caution. Yeah. Very, just simply because it's so early in the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very yeah. very early. We get weird um, results, but you know, yeah. there's nothing. I think what we've we've shown there's nothing to be scared of. Absolutely. I mean, Bournemouth at home. Obviously, I thought we, we were we were the better side for the best part of 70 minutes and then they go and score and it obviously changes the game. But, you know, it's we've had a couple of goals disallowed for offside, debatably. And, you know, um, I think it was Gary Gardner who scored against Stoke, wasn't it, in the last minute? And we had another yeah. one disallowed. We had another one disallowed, didn't we? Djukovic's header against Bournemouth as well. So, yeah. we're still scoring goals, even, you know, even when, the, you know, we're, we're not winning and stuff. And, you know, we just mm -hmm. look like a team that's going to score every game the way we play. It's just absolutely outstanding, isn't it? There's no way to bring anybody in before the end of the transfer window, do you think, uh, in any position? I think I'd like to see another striker if we could get one. Um, you know, I mean, the, for me, the perfect signing would be the lad from Man City, Dilap, if we could get him on loan for the season. Mm. But that would be a, a dream signing for us. I mean, imagine him and Chung. But mm. who knows? We'll see. We'll see what he does. I'm sure he's probably got his eye in for a few more players, only a couple more players at least, I would say. You know, we probably he... need to put that. We probably need cover for Jeremy Beater as well at left wing back, don't we? I mean, we've got Costello, but is there anyone mm. else who could play left wing back? Pedersen, obviously. Could Pedersen, come yeah, yeah. Do you think the uh, rumours about Scott Dunn have died down a bit? Yeah, did I see somewhere that he was going to Wigan? Oh, really? Possibly, oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard. I don't know where, yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Can we have a, a quick um, hello to uh, Mike Hill, who's in South Africa? Uh, Dave Troy, oh, uh, Michael Woods, oh, uh, Warren, who's in Cyprus. Uh, oh, again, it says, can I have a keep right off from my nephew? Dean is 33 today. He used to be a season ticket holder in the in the uh, Tilton disabled area. And um, Sam says, keep right on. There we go. Keep right on, then. Keep also, a very uh, uh, happy belated birthday to uh, our one and only Mike Wiseman as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was his birthday yesterday. Yeah, yeah. And he's today, he's the one and only... Martin Granger's birthday today. It is, yeah. Happy oh. birthday to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sam's just said what's happened to Dan. Well, we've just uh, we've just chatted about that, haven't we? We think maybe we're good. Yeah, yeah. We're good. Yeah. I, I think he'd be too old for a setup now as well, really. Yeah. 
Mm. I think it's good to have players around the place. I mean, we've got George Friend who's doing something similar, and he's come in and he's kind of like, you know, a bit of a sort of go-to and a good influence on, especially the younger lads, I would say. Um, you know, so it's good to have players in and around the squad like that. I mean, in the past, when we got promoted out of this division, we've had Steve Vickers, Jeff Kenner, you know, and, and, and obviously under McLeish, we had Lee Bowyer as a player, obviously, he was yeah. in the early 30s then, and, and obviously Stephen Andy Carr. Cole. Andy and, Cole. And, and Andy Cole, Andy. yeah, Andy Cole. Um, so, you know, it does, it, does, it does help, doesn't it, to have experience around the squad and in the <laughs> dressing room. Yeah. Mind you, going back to what you said about a friend, it's nice to see him at half time. I don't know anyone's noticed at half time. He's always he's almost doing like a mini coaching session with the, yeah. with the sub. It's good to yeah. see actually. So mm -hmm. yeah, you know yeah. I think he knows he's not obviously first choice, but it's nice to see him. You know, showing his experience a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, sorry if this one passed me by, but did we release Adam Clayton? No, I think he's still there. He's on the wage list, yeah. He's just not involved. He's, um, yeah. he's just helping out the catering. <laughs> <laughs> what position does he play? <laughs> uh, Woods, Woods is the closest thing we have since Barry Ferguson and what a player he was for Blues probably one of my favourites says James Brown uh, so yeah, can definitely. Woods make great partnership how mm -hmm. did Chong not get in a championship team of the week I know four yeah. of us did yeah I saw that yeah we did well mm -hmm. this week didn't we yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I I mean, I want to I want to shout out the centre halves as well. You know, Dean and Roberts and Pedersen's doing so well at centre half with them. The three of them have just been out. Well, they were outstanding on Saturday, and you know, at yeah. Sheffield United away as well. And mm. you know, the, the the goals we've conceded, one or two maybe been avoidable, but overall, you know, did, um, did you Paul or did you go down? Say again. You got on Blues TV or did you go down? Yeah, no, I didn't go. Um, so yeah, so we'll see. I'm not going to go to. Uh, We've decided we're not going to go now until the seats that we paid for have become available. You know, we want, we want to sit where we paid to sit. And, you know, we're just going to sort of wait until it becomes available and see how long it takes. And hopefully it isn't going to be too long, but we'll see. Mm. You don't fancy sitting behind that pylon? What's no. the uh, latest news on it? Just, no. There's no, there's nothing, nothing's no come update, out. No, it's no. all become a bit quiet. Yeah. I saw, I, saw, I saw the spoof uh, one that was going around about it being shut all season. That's one room here. Yeah. I'll do away games, don't get me wrong. I might do a few away games, but at home, I want to sit, you know, in my seat. Mm. Uh, we also need to welcome Paul Williams to his new role in the academy. Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. New face, mm. yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, board. Does anyone think that Etheridge might struggle to get his starting spot back? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes, if he carries on like this, yeah, he will. Yeah, if he, if he ain't broke. You know. Yeah. No, no, he's doing really well. Um, mm. You know, there's no reason to change anybody in that 11 from Saturday. Is they now in the next game? Obviously, I'm talking on Saturday, not tomorrow night. In, on Saturday, you know, I can see him picking the same 11 again after that, can't you? Mm. Mm. Definitely. I mean, going back to tomorrow, the cup game tomorrow, you'd imagine there'd be a similar sort of lineup to the Colchester game. Yeah, I think yeah. I think Fulham would do the same as well, wouldn't they? I think it'd just be a, you know, a lot of kids and a lot of uh, fringe players. Yeah. But even the, even in that team, you know, we've got one or two decent kids, haven't we? A few decent players yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah we are. I mean, the kid but who scored the last game. The... Sorry, what yeah, do we take that competition seriously? You know, we won it 11 years ago. Hmm. But, well, at what junction do we, we, we say, OK, you know what, we're going to go for this and have a go at it? I think well, if we get through tomorrow, Nick, I think if we get through tomorrow and get a big, you know, big draw next round, that'll right, be the third I... round. But yeah, I'll think about it. Hmm. Yeah, Prem team coming next, then not they? Fulham and no more. No. <laughs> uh, Nigel wants to know, has anybody heard about the rumour about administration? Is there any truth in the rumour? It is just a rumour. Uh, no, I've heard nothing. No. I've heard nothing. Mm. nothing uh, Adam? Nothing. No, no, me. No. no. Well, nothing, nothing reliable. Uh, nothing reliable. So no. us, nobody's mentioned the word administration to us. No, uh, no, no, no. Uh, don't we, get me wrong. Uh, don't get Will me you wrong. There's a small elephant in the room. There's no Matt Sadler because uh, oh, Michael Woods has just made a point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he is coming in. He'll be on in around about uh, eight fifteen, hopefully. No, that's. He's just Matt's warming up. <laughs> he's just warming up. Yeah. yeah he's just... <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, the cat to make her weekly appearance on the Tilton Talk Show. There she is. Hello, uh, Hello. Uh, Linda. Linda Edsner has just said uh, Adam Wilkes looks like Eric Morgan. Doppelganger. 
Hashtag. Mm. Oh, it's our four ganger again, yeah. That's not a bad one, is it? Yeah, sure. It is. I'll take that. <laughs> I like Eric and Ernie. Oh, I got um, Pete Taylor's just made a good point on the chat actually he just said it'd be great to see Joe Bellingham get on tomorrow night absolutely yeah, yeah. absolutely you know, yeah right go. I was down this weekend and got talking to the lad working behind a bar Spurs fan he said uh, what do you reckon to this Joe Bellingham I mean he's heard of him already you know what I mean mm. his name out there already mm. and uh, well he, he didn't call him by his name actually he said Jude's little brother <laughs> I said it's incredible I said get, have a look at some YouTube videos of him Mm. Yeah, I can't wait to see that young talent come on. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and while we're on the subject, yeah. I think Mike Dodds has uh, moved on, hasn't he? Obviously, which is why Paul yeah. Williams. Um, yeah. So that's interesting. I wonder why he left. Mm. 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 That caused a bit of a furore, didn't it, on uh, Twitter? On social mm. media, yeah. Uh, well, that's uh, it. Oh, we've we've got got a, we'll move yeah, on. He's got together. He's going to. He's going to. You know, put his trust in them. And whatever he does, goes. That's it. Mm. That's his job, mate. That's what he's there for, isn't it? Sort it out. Yeah, definitely. Mm. You know, but I mean, some... I mean, looking at it, you can you can just see such a difference in the team, the spirit, and the teamwork, in the shape, the formation, everything about it. From goalkeeper to striker, looks good. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. As Craig says, uh, there's fight and passion and pride when wearing the badge. Mm. Yeah. Talking about the badge, I've heard one or two stories, and I've seen a few shots as well of like a lot of people's badges peeling. Falling off, um, yeah, I've, yeah, sure. I've, seen, I've, seen, I've yeah. seen interviews with players after games and the badges yeah. are hanging off. Yeah. You know, yeah. what, what, what is going on with the kit manufacturers? Um, mm. Because people are Terrible. paying top dollar for this, for this Nike, you know, um, this Nike sport, you know, this training wear and the, and the kits, and mm. it's not good enough, is it, really? Yeah, it just looks like Anybody got... an iron on one, doesn't it? Look in the back of the tab for me and, and tell us where it's made. Just tell us where it's made. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and and yeah. put comments on the chat if you're having problems. Like I've just mentioned with your with your training wear or your kits. Um, yeah. In fact, post your pictures to our page. Yeah, yeah. Post them to the page. Yeah, I've, got, I've, got, I've got I've got mine here. I've got mine. Hang on, look. Yeah, uh, made in Georgia. Did Georgia? you see that? There you go. Yeah, East European. In where? Sorry, Georgia. Georgia. Georgia, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. But hang on, which I mean, how, how many Georgias no, are there in the world? It's, it's a George. It's the East. Euro, East. Uh, it's the one next to Russia. On not the, left, the one in America. The left on the left hand side. Down no, not the deep. <laughs> not the deep. <laughs> so, yeah. side, yeah. But I'm scared yeah. to wear it now. It just fall apart. Yeah, yeah, mm. uh, yeah. You'll um, find that most of them are right from East European countries or the Far East. So that's just the way. Or Turkey. But they obviously think they obviously think that we're all athletes as well. They're only making them to fit anybody with a six pack as well. <laughs> oh well, me and, yeah, Mark, me and Mark should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> six pack is six beers on me belly, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got a six pack. I got a keg. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I just got a one pack at the moment. Uh, uh, we just need a ground now, says Graham Haynes. Yeah. Well, yeah, my lad was saying to me, "Just wait till the Commonwealth Games is finished, Dad." <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I don't know. We're not going. We're not going to Perry Bar. Yeah, and today, if they do move there, I don't know if I ever want to go again. We're not going to Perry Bar. No, that, I can't say that. That's happening. a promise from me personally yeah. to you, Nick. We are not going to Perry Bar. No, the no, cost, the room cost, won't go away. The cost of altering that grad, that that stadium to host f football would be more than it would to rebuild St okay. Andrews. <laughs> yeah. But is it, like, isn't it going to be, a, isn't it going to be a, um, exclusively athletics? It's going to be exclusively athletics, yeah. Nothing else. It's That's an investment off. into Which athletics. Which I didn't know that, to be honest. Yeah, it's an investment into I athletics. I weren't aware of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it'll always be an athletic uh, stadium. Things can be changed and uh, councils can be, um, shall we say... Persuaded, to. persuaded. Mm. Yeah, excellent word there, uh, Mr. Wilkes. I've only just got back off uh, off my two day holiday, and you know the mind's <laughs> not yet, dear boy. But persuaded, yeah, like that one. <laughs> Stuart Rose <laughs> says, "Evening, boys. Sod ninth. We're top six, easy. In Lee, we trust." On that form on Saturday, consistently, I totally agree. Mm. It's all about mm. consistency, isn't it? And putting the ball in the back of the net, and 
if Scott Hogan can get 20 plus and Chong keeps playing like this and, yeah. you know, Wood stays injury free and we keep that, you know, the, the, the sort of foundations of our strongest 11 all season, if you like, with a few coming in and out now and again, then yeah, why not? Mm, I can see that naked show coming very, very shortly. Yeah. Oh, mate, I hope so. Um, it was close. Auntie Linda's going to come. Karen's going to come. Uh, <laughs> it was. It was a close Fred. one. It was a close Inviting one. Inviting the Blues ladies team in, the Blues, blues women team then. Gonna... Chris, uh, you know when you do that naked show? Yep. Yeah. Can you make what, it you for the speedway, please? So <laughs> 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 oh, oh, off. <laughs> uh, uh, what a tackle by Roberts in the first few minutes as Ray Oh, Arbro. wow. Yeah. He did get booked for it, though, didn't he? Um, but, yeah, he was... <laughs> he was looking... Well, it wasn't a red, was it? But it was It was, It was. was a late challenge, I'll say that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, he certainly made up for it. He certainly um, put that right, didn't he? A few minutes later. What a header. Right header, that was, yeah. Mm. It's fine about the... Uh... Paul, is that if, if we play a game like that, and I know it's I'm not going to put Luke and Town down, I'm not, right? But if we play a game like that and we get four people scoring in the same match, then that's something to really look forward to. 100%. I mean, Luton, not many not many teams are going to go to Luton and score five goals. Not many teams have. Um, so, you know, I don't think we can underestimate what we achieved on Saturday and what we did. It's It's, it's a great foundation now to build on for the next game and the rest of the season but like I keep saying same, just about consistency same, same Luton team that nearly came back and uh, did, a, did a number over baggies yeah. yeah 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 yeah. and we usually have a tough time well I don't think they've ever beat us there have they but we've, we've you know we've got the odd 1-1 one, one, haven't we and only beat them 1-0 now and again and stuff like that so it's always a difficult game so you know for me the difference is in the middle of the park you know we've got Chung pulling the strings and just absolutely destroying teams. And, and yeah. Ryan Woods in midfield is just orchestrating everything else, isn't he? He's just incredible. Yeah, really. he's, he's incredible. That is incredible. Yeah. Inspired the signing he was. Yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously he's getting a maximum performance level out of every other player we've got as well, you know. So it just shows you, doesn't it, what a difference it makes when you've got a manager there, you know, that, that they like and that sort of plays everyone to their strengths. Well, you Hogan know, it, hinted at that. Hogan hinted at that, didn't he, about the previous, uh, you know, Karanka? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, but he's the also, only one... Of... Sorry, Mark. Go on, Mark. No, no, sorry, Paul. I was going to say, going back to Hogan as well, he, he, um, didn't he say he didn't sleep the night before because his daughter was poorly? Something like that, so yeah, he, yeah. Had, he had hardly any sleep the night on Friday night. So, yeah. you know, to play like that. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but now let's, let, let, you know, let's try and... Um... Well, they've set the bar now. Let's try and get as close to that as we can every game. You know, it's not we're not going to win every every game five 0 Don't get me wrong, but it's difficult to consistently perform at that level at the, in this league, isn't it? Uh, Question so, for him: Do you think we'll manage to score six at any point this year? Look, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to sound like a broken record now, but if we keep playing like that, then why not? Yeah, when Luton <laughs> comes to our ground, <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm, I've got a feeling we will. Yeah. Be very, very worried. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll settle for a, I'll settle for a scrappy one nil. Do you know what I mean? In this league, it's never, we've never got out of this league, have we? Playing pretty football every week and winning five 0 No, yeah. no. Mm. Uh, I wonder but... if anybody can add, uh, um, can help Adam BCFC while well, she says. Does anyone know for definite season ticket holders get free access to Blues under twenty three home <clears throat> games? Does anybody know? If anybody knows. Uh, let us know. Um, no, they I don't know. They don't play. They play at Andrews. They play at Wash Hills, don't they? They're playing right. Didn't they play at Nuneaton? Uh, Nuneaton, yesterday, yeah. Yesterday as well. It was just strange jaunt, wasn't it, really? Mm. Yeah. Apparently, it looked like uh, Alan Carr as well, says Nigel. Um, that's to Adam. Uh, Lee's apologising apologizing for being late. Where's he been? Oh, I don't know. <coughs> can't get the stuff, can you? Uh, no. There was something earlier about uh, the cop and the Tilton. When are they going to be ready? And I think Steve put, although it's gone from my thing, I think he put um, could be open for the Derby game. There you go. Yeah, yeah that's what the, the that, was the update. that was the last update oh, we had, wasn't it? Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Because I'll be there for that game. Yeah. Good. Good. Is it? Well, is it? Mm. And go, going back, going back to the the badges as well. Sam says it's peeling. Like last mm. year, yeah. Just, uh, just to give you an idea, uh, though, sorry, Chris, just to give you an idea of how well Lee Bowyer's doing, he's the only manager mm. that's got three at the back working ever. I mean, we've had it under Zola, we had it under Pep, 
and he soon changed it, didn't he, to four four two. You know, mm. so we've tried it in the past, um, and we did it under Karanka a few times as well, didn't we? Mm. But mm. it's just, yeah, he's just got it on another. He's just got it on another level, and he's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, it's like I say, we don't fear anyone, do we? I mean, you think of the toughest team in that league, and we just don't fear them at all. Mm, that's how it should be. Yeah. Look, we were desperately, desperately unlucky against Bournemouth, right? Yeah, we could have got uh, something. Yeah. Stoke, strong physical side. You know, they're going to they're gonna come and, and muscle you and batter you a little bit, no matter where they go. I don't think they're going to be frightened of too many teams, to be fair. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, poor little Luton. Uh, well, I'm not belittling them, but, you know... Uh, well, they they just they just had to take a tonking, didn't they? And that was it. We we were better, and that you know we took advantage of it. And I take Sheffield United as well, and that was a bit of a shocker to most people. And sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mm. Apparently, Georgia is the little old lady who makes them out of small ETH. <laughs> that's, so that's who Georgia is. <laughs> yeah, somebody said he likes how Colin gets forward in in this system as well, which is absolutely right. Yeah. He's mm. um he's, he's excelling, isn't he? Well, he's he's been a consistent player for us since he's been here anyway. But again, he's yeah. got, I keep saying he's got maximum performance out of every player. You know, no nobody's even when we lost two 0 to Bournemouth. You know, nobody really, I would say, was below a seven out of ten or a six and a half out of ten. Really, you know, because we played well. We played well, yeah. Yeah, mm. I'd love to see the goals back because you couldn't really get a good angle, could you, of whether Djokovic and Gary Gardner were offside when the goals were disallowed. Yeah, so I'd like to see it again. I wouldn't mind seeing that with the old VAR lines to see whether there were or there weren't, you know. That's it. The one for me was Djokovic's header against Bournemouth. He looked, he did look level to me, but it's difficult to tell on the angles that we had. Mm. Yeah, I thought that, but I thought it was a bit harsh. But again, like you say, you know, you, you, where, where the TV was panning in, you know, really, really difficult to... Yeah, you can't tell, can you? No. They're yeah. right bogey team, aren't they? Bournemouth, right bogey team. Well, they didn't score eight, did they? What's that, Nick? They didn't score eight this time. No, they didn't no. score eight, no. There's, no. there's a improvement. And they're, they're going to be right up there. So I think Stoke are going to probably be up there. Um, and you know what? We've had a hard start to the season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's not been an easy, you know, first few games, to be fair. No. No, no not at all. Mm. And uh, I think, you know, Fulham will be there or thereabouts at the end. And the Baggies, will obviously, will be there or thereabouts. Yeah. The team that's surprising me at the moment that's getting turned over quite badly is Sheffield United, isn't it? That seems to be yeah, on a... Yeah, they're really struggling. And <coughs> Forrest. Forrest yeah, yeah. is a rock bottom, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think Chris Hutton's on borrowed time, I think. Mm. Yeah. 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 Well, Craig said, let's not forget to mention the 1,032 Blues fans that made the stadium sound like a home ground. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. Fantastic, weren't they? Yeah. Abs yeah. They were absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Every... yeah. yeah brilliant. I'd love to have gone, but... Uh, to say we had to, we had to go down and see uh, me son. It's his birthday. Happy birthday to Luke on the first of September. Um, so uh, yeah, so um, you know, nice weekend out and recharge the batteries a little bit. Get ready for work tomorrow. Double shift. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hogan himself was ill and asked to come off, as he had nothing left in the tank. That's referring to. Uh, Earlier mm. conversation, yeah. yeah, 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 and that'll be why he was let that would be why he didn't start against Bournemouth as well, won't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can tell it's a week. different, you can tell it's a different team from when they arrive. Lee has got them as a unit, like his thoughts of play to or get out, like his thoughts mm. of play or get out is what he's trying to say. That's from Nigel, yeah, Mann. yeah, yeah. Well, they're, yeah. They're, they're a good mirror of the manager, aren't they? I mean, mm. even the player himself, he was a box to box midfielder when he? he was everywhere. Yeah. You know, and 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 we're, we're we're good defensively, and we're good going forward. So, both sides of the game at the moment, we're very good. Mm. Uh, Brenda Brown needs cheering up because uh, she's gone down with the dreaded COVID as well. She has, yeah. well if that five goals didn't cheer you up the weekend, Brenda, nothing will. But I tell you what, the Tilton Silk Show are always here for you, and always. everybody in two. Yeah. And my son said to me, he said, "I watched that video back, Dad, the ten minute one, yeah." And right at the very beginning, you can hear Jeremy. Come on, Blues! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen Davo's diary as well? It's good to watch, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, good good yeah, 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 yeah. It was good. Yeah. Uh, Did we get that? Uh, get my turn, Steve Portman. He's got the COVID as well. So, yeah. uh, yeah. um, 
Oh, I don't know. A lot of lot of football fans going down with it at the minute. That's not there is, uh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so uh, and oh, yeah, the uh, the people who helped the steward who had uh, a nasty turn the oh, other day as well. Yeah, that was horrific. Yeah, yeah well yeah. done. Um, yeah, you win us that, didn't you, Mark? That was in front of you, wasn't it, Mark? Yeah, it was right in front of me. Yeah, um, me and my friend Jay, we saw it. Um, yeah, it was, it was not nice. Um, happened just before they scored Bournemouth, and uh, yeah, the, the, it was just not nice to see the, the poor guy. Um, yeah, to have a, have a fit like that, it's just not, it's, it's horrible. Um, luckily, like you say, he seems to have made a recovery. Yeah, and, uh, so and that was, everybody's looking happy. That's what Blues fans do to each other, they help each other out. Now, to the numpties mm-hmm. that. Uh, uh, we're kicking off in the uh, in the streets after the Stoke game. Really, mm-hmm. really, get a light. Yeah. I, I, did, I didn't hear about that, Nick. Uh, yeah, the police have got a road shut off, so we've got uh, oh, okay. yeah. quite quite uh, quite poorly. Uh, but you know, let's not give him any airtime, eh? No, 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 no. I would, no, no. would <laughs> look look. The banter is brilliant. It's brutal, and I love it. Yeah, I'd love to be able to mix with the away fans after a game and have a chat. And you know, what did you think? Da, 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 da. <coughs> have a beer together. Come on, it's two thousand and twenty-one for Christ's sake. Mm. Um, oh. I think for uh, me, from memory, the best away fans after we beat them at the Millennium Stadium in two thousand and two have got to be Norwich. They were just absolutely yeah. They were giving standard ovations and everything, weren't they? Not yeah. Guard of Honour. Yeah. To the fans, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were they were good. Yeah. Yeah, they were. And and Bruges when they came to Blues, uh, when Bruges came up uh, in the Europa at uh, mm-hmm. St Andrews, they were fantastic as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were brilliant. Up, yeah. Newcastle were very welcoming as well when I went up there back yeah. in the when David Dunn scored off the penalty rebound. Yeah, I went, yeah, well, I went to that one. Yeah, yeah. And I did, and I did, yeah, and. Um, yeah. They were great with us. In the, you know, welcome to me yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gentle reminder, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you're going to write on the Tilt and Talk page, please no profanities at all whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've had warnings off Facebook and we do not want that page shut down, obviously. But they will because that's what they do. That's what they're like. So please, mm-hmm. if you're going to write any comments on there and you put your name to it, if it is that we get another notification, then I'm afraid we'll just have to take you off because we can't afford, as I say, for that page to go down. It does a lot of good work for people, right? And um, let's just keep that one perfectly clean. There are others, and I'm not knocking them because I've I've joined them, right? There are others where you can use those kind of words, yeah. Um, uh, But on our one, please, please, please keep it real, keep it clean, and keep it football-related. Lose related, family, family, family. Uh, or family. help somebody related. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, that, just, yeah, we have had a few warnings, haven't we, off uh, Facebook? We, so. yeah, we had another one the other day, and yeah, I just yeah, so. just change the word in, right? Mm. Or, or or just blank it out. You know, just put a load of stars. Yeah. Or something like that. But please, 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 uh, and especially with all the youngsters that uh, that listen into and, and watch that page as well, um, we want to keep that one absolutely. Your clean, yeah. Uh, Lin- Lin- Linda's come on. Uh, she thinks I'm she might think I'm naked, so she just wants me to give her a wave. I'm not, I'm not naked. Who's come on, there you, there you go, give it away. Yeah, who's come on, Linda, <laughs> Linda. Who's... Auntie Linda. Hi, Linda. Uh, yeah, massive shout out to one of the excessive blues carers who jumped out to support the um, yeah, Stuart. Yeah. yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, uh, great. Some of the gestures and banter is too aggressive. Half the time, a few supporters don't watch the game. They just go to annoy the opposition, and it's getting worse. Uh, no need to show any sort of violence to football these days. Oh, yeah. Did anybody see the Marseille versus Nice game? And what happened? Oh, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, Payette, weren't it? I didn't, Payette, see it. Yeah. I didn't see it. I've heard about it. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I remember the crowd threw a bottle of water at him. Yeah. He turned around, picked up, and threw it back at the crowd. And then the crowd decided to jump on the pitch to try and get at him. Why did, oh, why yeah. did he do that? Why did he do that? Yeah. Who was? Sorry. <sighs> right. Okay. My, speak, my speaker's not working very well. I'll, I'll try and put me uh, me uh, me Bluetooth one on. Chris, let me know if it's no good whatsoever. Power on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's the ultimate professional, isn't he? Yeah. Do we think um, in centre mid, you know, we've got Woods there, who's obviously first choice. Um, but if he was to be suspended or miss a game, 
You've obviously got Gary Gardner. You've got Sunich. Do you think we could do with one more? Because obviously Clayton's probably like, you know, going to be, I would imagine, moving on. And who else have we got that could play there? Because mm. um, you need a two, don't you? We play with a two there. Yeah. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head who we could put in there. Mm. Charlie Lakin, I could think of. Um, but apart from that, we're struggling a bit. And we said, do you think we're we could do, we, uh... get, get, get one more in? Mm. Yeah. Evening, <clears throat> evening from Port, Porth Call, says Gregory Beasley. <laughs> Nigel said, is that his Zimmer frame? Power on. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> it's a slightly older Power Ranger. <laughs> Michael yeah. Woods has just said that's why Lebo you wants a striker and a centre mid. Yeah, so yeah, maybe yeah. He's, he's in the market for another striker and another central midfield player. Isn't it strange that we're asking, we're talking about that we need a striker even though we scored five, five on Saturday? Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying necessarily to start every game. Yeah. Um, you know, to be in the starting eleven, but you know, you got Chuck Sonic and you got Leeko, ain't you? The other two and. Obviously, Cosgrove's out on loan, so we could probably do with another one, really, to mm. be honest. Yeah. The, the yeah. Bolster, and if we can get that right, that signing as well, if, he, yeah. if he's as good as Bowie's other signing so far, certainly Woods and Chum, then you never know, do you? Mm. Uh, yeah. Brett, Brett says, would you put Etheridge back in when fit or stick with Saki? Stick with Saki. We've got that one. Yeah. We've got a stick, yeah. There's no reason to change it, is there, at the minute? Mm. Yeah, if it ain't Brett. He's doing his job. Mm. I'm a big average fan, though. Yeah, I like yeah. Etheridge, yeah. But yeah. Is, isn't it nice to have two, two goalkeepers, you know what I mean, yeah. vying for a place? I think it's brilliant. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm. It, is the chap we got between the sticks now the lad we had from Wolves? Is that him? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, he's doing really well. I was a bit I was a bit concerned pre-season when I saw a few of the shots from his friends. Yeah. But like, yeah. He's almost like a different man, isn't he, from them mm-hmm. games? He's obviously got he's got that out of the way. And he's, worked he's on his fitness. Really well. Imagine. Worked on his fitness a bit and, you know, sharpened him up. Yeah, got rid of the rust. He's our special yeah. guest for me. Yeah, I'll just get him sorted. Mm. Mm. Yep, yeah, okay. Uh, how will we cover the injuries? They will come. Hi, right, Matty, you all right? How are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just, Matt. just yeah. queuing How are we doing, chaps? Sorry, chaps. It's, right. uh, it's chaos here at the minute. Home late. Hey. Put the kids to bed. Straight onto this. <laughs> you, look, you look depressed, Matt. No, no. This is the time to relax now. How are we doing anyway? Yeah, we're all good. We're oh, all good. Yeah. We're all good. We're all good. Uh, good. Sorry for again. Sorry for the the tardiness. We've lost your lot, Matt. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. My signature locks. I know. I see. I'm with Mike every day, and he reminds me daily about those locks. <laughs> How old are you, Matt? To go. Can I ask you? How old, how, can I ask you, Matt? How old you are? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Okay. Look at him. <laughs> I've got a shirt. I've got a shirt. I've got a shirt older than that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't feel it though. Not when you're playing with all these eighteen-year-olds, seventeen-year-olds, twenty-year-olds. It makes you feel every one of your thirty-six years. That's for sure. Yeah. So you're still playing, yeah? Well, this is the first season that I haven't trained. Um, uh, and, and played so this is the first one where it's uh, a signal over to the other side albeit I am still registered to play so if I'm needed I am keeping fit um, and, and keeping ready for if you've called upon but I, I am enjoying the, the coaching side so uh, mm. we've got a really good squad fing- and fingers crossed that, that you know they'll do the business so they won't need an old bugger like me uh, and uh, <laughs> oh, injuries yeah. permitting and your first professional game, Matt, was up against Ivy Beckham, wasn't it? Yeah. No, it wasn't. My first professional game was away at Leighton Orient in the... Oh, the in, the, in, the, in the League yeah. Cup, wasn't it? Was it is that, I don't know if it was the Carling Cup then or whatever it was called then, but it was in the League Cup. Um, and I think that was 2002, I think. Was that Burn John bagged a couple? Burn John scored a couple, yeah. Yeah, he scored a hat-trick, I think. A yeah. hat-trick. Yeah, yeah, he's got a hat trick. Yeah, uh, we won three yeah. two on the day, so I was delighted with that. But that was, yeah, that was the first one. And then um, a couple of weeks after that, I made my league debut. That was against Bolton, I believe. 
Oh. Um, and then there were a couple of more in, in amongst that, but then uh, I had a bad injury at the time and then it was kind of my second day, well, second day, but it was a, a, a game against Man U was a few games after that, basically. And talk us through what that was like, uh, coming up against Beckham at Old Trafford. And How old was you then, about 18? Uh, still 17, but I think... Yeah, to, uh, I mean, I must say that obviously it's a bit of a blur of the day, but I, I, I was off the back of so a little picture. So I'd, I'd played in that League Cup game, as I say, and then played a couple of league games. So it was all great, you know, I'm thinking, here we go. And then um, I went to training one day when I was supposed to, I mean, then I wasn't even uh, supposed to be at training. I was supposed to be at college as it was then, because was, that's the age I was on the Monday morning. And um injured myself and injured my ankle on that Monday morning when you know I still look back and think well I shouldn't have actually been in on the session that day I should have been at college as I say so that's a, a one of those sliding doors moments because then missed a, a fair little, little bit of time then to then go into the Man U game um, wasn't expecting to play um, that game and I just remember being in the hotel and being in the squad and, and the manager, the gaffer, Steve Bruce at the time, saying um, saying the team out. And he said, said the back the other back three lads and then said the name Matt. And I'm thinking, well, it can't be me. Who else is called Matt in the team that could be playing in the back four the day? And then I, you know, start processing it, thinking, geez, actually, he does mean me. Here. Right, bloody hell, I better get the game face on. Um, better start well, texting my mum and dad and let them know, you better come up to this game today. I'm in the team. Um, and then the rest is kind of a bit of a blur, but the only regret being that I wasn't properly fit at that point because of the back of the injuries I'd had. Um, and uh, and the game went okay. We lost the game 2-0. Uh, and yeah. it, that was all stuff was fine. But yeah, it, it, the only regret from that is that I wasn't quite at the fitness I'd probably like to have been now. Yeah. No, I know now, but you get through on adrenaline as a young player, don't you? I remember watching it at St Andrews on the big screen. Um, yeah. Oh, your yeah. Mate, your mate, Rocky. Well, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because my dad is best mates with his dad, obviously, Alf, you know. With Alf, dad, of course. I'm, you know, I know you, Paul. Of course yeah. I do. I've seen you at loads of do's over the years. Yeah. Um, Drunk, probably. Uh, yeah, probably every chance. Yeah, slurring his words. This is the most coherent I've seen him. Yeah. Um, and uh, no, but yeah, so obviously I'm Birmingham, uh, Birmingham born and bred. All my friends are. Still, my school friends now. Rook's my best mate. You've got a, we've got a group of us that all went to school together, which was Cockshire Hill in in Yardley, same school as as Craig and Gary um, went to. So and Lee Carsley as well. So there's a good pedigree of players there. Um, another lad, Andrew Wingy, went and played professionally. A couple of other lads, one of the other mates, Andrew Gallin, they played professionally. A weird yeah. another link. We had a, another player called Gary Birch who. He was the first one of the group who was oh, who him, yeah. played, and now he's just starting as groundsman at, uh, at Warsaw. So going yeah. full circle now. So it, it, yeah, we can't shake us off these Yardley lads. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, Rourke still best mate. I didn't know he was watching that game there. Um, I'm sure. Yeah. He was, I'm sure he was very critical of the performance. Apparently, <laughs> apparently you're a doppelganger for Scott Hogan. That's well, we do. Someone else has said the same thing. Repeat. You're a doppel butt ganger for uh, Scotty Hogan. Craig Courtney wants uh, uh, Paul Hipkiss sacked immediately on the spot for yeah. uh, two weeks on the bounce with incorrect information. Our resident savant has got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I got it wrong. Yeah, two, two, two. You're on a bad run. You're on a really bad run. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm human. I don't know everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's an alcohol. Uh, no, man, how uh, you two goals went the weekend for the Blues? <laughs> He's trying to. Oh yeah, I love the. Yeah, love the. If I was scoring two goals, that's another one of my regrets that I didn't score for the club. That would have been a celebration and half that I would have had. But um, yeah, unfortunately, he's the goal scorer, not myself. Yeah, but that, that, that's. Shouldn't ask his footballing hero, and also, uh, what was the best piece of advice you got in your career? What was the first one? Sorry. Who is your footballing hero, and what was the best piece of advice you ever got in your career? Uh, footballing hero would always be my dad um, and that will always be that even though he played to a relatively modest level himself it wasn't he was always a semi-professional but um, he's got away with stories so he sounds a hell of a player so he's definitely my hero from that point of view uh, and what sorry what was the second question uh, um, what was the best bit of advice you ever got in your career oh, yeah. uh, whew, best bit of advice um 
well, I try and impart a load of different random pieces of advice to the lads now. Um, I remember Steve Bruce as a defender telling me that the centre forwards and midfield players can go and chuck it in for 10, 15 minutes at the end of a game if we're winning, whereas as a defender, you can never switch off. Um, that that always sticks with me because I do think it now, you know, all these, the most highly paid ones, they go off glory in it, Ole in it, and then the defenders at the back there and the goalies at the back there still living off their last nerve thinking, geez, we can see the goal here and we're back in, you know, opposition back in it. So that piece of advice always sticks with me from, not, you know, a defender's point of view. But I don't know. When you, you've played through what I've 20 years playing now, I think um, I've always just, it's not advice-wise, but always just wanted, people have always said, just keep playing for as long as you've enjoyed it. Um, and as long as you're enjoying being in the game and, and as long as you're playing, then um, it's still for you. And I still feel that way now. Mm. It's not the, uh, it's not the Matt, Matt Sadler, uh, Matty Sadler uh, fan club are in tonight, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Not your family on again, are they? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Nigel Matt says, Paul, you're a name dropper. Do you know Elvis? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and, uh, Craig Courtney says, if you reach a hat trick of bad information next week, it's a £20 penalty to the. <laughs> I'll put Tony Cobb £20 20. fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll just read this one. Uh, does Matty uh, still have a bromance with Steve and Kelly? Hell yeah. well, it was on the Steve, season DVD when rooming and, together. Uh, we did a re- I don't, I'm hoping you don't remember this, but we did a we it was Premier League World that we did a thing with, with Tom Ross and and Dance. And we did a hor- if you uh, I hope it stays at the very back of Room 101 because it was a horrendous little cutout thing that they made us do to a song that Tom and Dance had come up with. So, but that was me and Kells and Kells was giving it his best drumming performance. I think, no, Kells was on the guitar. I was on the drums. Um, but yeah, we still speak every now and again. Kells lives in Soliol as well. Uh, can't get enough of the area. Um, my uncle's, I think, helping build his house at the minute. So yeah, we've got a, a little link there. But um, yeah, the bromance continues. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, says I was talking to Ben Gallon made- today. Do you know ben, ben Gallen, yeah, yeah, we went to school. Ben. school that yeah. went on to play professional football. And Gaynor Robinson says, can you ask Matt, who is your best manager you ever played on, Dave? Sorry, say the first part again. The, the first one was Lee Malin. Uh, he was talking to Ben Gallen today yeah. about oh, all yeah. the, from the school that went on to play professional football. Yeah. And Gloria Robinson, uh, sorry, Gaynor Robinson, can you ask Matt, who was the best manager you played on, Dave? Um, I've been fortunate to play under uh, um, some really good managers. Of course, uh, while at Birmingham, without doubt, it would be Steve Bruce. Um, for me personally, he he believed in me. I talk about injuries and stuff at the start of my career. Well, any other manager, I'm sure, would have cast me aside during that spell because there was ample opportunity for him to do that. Um, because I've made my, as I've said, made my debut at 17, but then didn't replay again until I think I was either 20 or 21. Um, and that would have only been because of Steve. So for that, yeah, yeah probably the biggest influence on my career. Um, and then some really good ones. Oh, sorry. So I say something. Just, how'd you get through that mentally, Matt, from just having your debut and then just nothing for a few years? Well, you no, know, that was, t- I mean, this was probably before the days of, of, um, of people speaking openly about mental health and stuff, which is, you know, I'm a big advocate for now, but sure. Um, for sure it was, um, it was probably a bit of an identity crisis is probably the best way of explaining it. Um, believing that you should be something and then thinking, geez, well, I'm not actually that and I'm training, but I know I'm not quite right. So what's going on here? Um and all I can say is that during that period of, for sure, um, uncertainty, it, it, this, the, the kind of flame remained that I just knew I needed to get back into the first team by hook or by crook. I don't know, some things are just meant to be in your life, I suppose. And that was one that I just thought, it, it will happen, it will happen, it will happen. Um, again, talk about sliding doors moments. The gaffer, Steve Bruce, he could have left at any moment and didn't. And again, that was fortunate. So football will always be a game of huge fortune for many different reasons, um, not only when you're actually playing, but um, I suppose belief is the only thing that, that carried me through some of those times where I thought, you know, I'm probably going to have to 
it felt like I might have to call it a day because I was just wasn't finding um, my, my body was well, my ankle at the time as it was was letting me down. But I don't know really what happened. It, it sorted itself out and uh, and then managed to carry on for the whatever whatever it's been seventeen more years. But did you get the knife? Did you get the knife for it? Sound again, did I what? Sorry. Sorry again, Adam. Uh, did you go under the knife for you, for your ankle? I had five surgeries on my ankle at the time, um, so yeah, yeah, that was again challenging. Um, every time it was going in, coming out after it, and, and waking up thinking, "Just give me some positive news." Was did you find out what was going on in there, etc.? Um, and I, I mean, to this day, I don't really know what it was. It, 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 something or, or whatever it was settled down over time. Mm. Um, and allowed me to 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 get properly fit. Um, I remember doing runs with Keith Birch in the fitness. Uh, sorry, the old reserve team manager, and he, and he was fit as a butcher's dog, but he was miles ahead of me in the fitness, running around West Hills. And I'm thinking, geez, I'm no, no nowhere near this. How am I going to play, you know, Premier League football if I can't keep up with Birch? He was, <laughs> as I say, as fit as a butcher's dog, but he was fifty something at the time. Mm. Um, and whatever happened, you know, as I say, stroke a look, but it, it, it all came together eventually. Mm. Excuse me, you, a for you. Sorry, going back, going back to your debut, Matt, did, did Beckham give you any advice afterwards? No, he didn't, you know. Did you have a chat I, with him? No, I didn't. I know I'm still now, I'm one of those people that um, I kind of, I don't tend to put people on pedestals. Um yeah. Uh, as for who they are, I'm, I'm really uh, like I don't get shirts or anything like that. That's never been something I've, I've really wanted to do because um, I just see them as blokes, you know, as people. Yeah. But and that that still is the case. However, again, probably the older you thinks it would have been great to have tapped into a little bit of experience to, to some of the people that I played with along that time. More so than obviously teammates were fantastic, but other people. But it's I don't know. It's just not the way. Uh, I, it's yeah. It, as a such a young kid, I, I probably would have liked her. Aunt Plonker stood outside trying to speak to him. They would have probably thought I was a support a, a fan asking for an autograph <laughs> rather than somebody <laughs> playing. <laughs> Nick, he's, you, sorry, you wanted to come in. Uh, yeah, loads of questions coming in for you, buddy. Uh, Jason McDonough wants to know what advice would you give to young players? <laughs> the, the, oh, it's a cliche, isn't it? But yeah. The, hard work and and that takes many forms such an easy word to throw out but being relentless in your pursuit of working hard to to achieve whatever that is you might want to achieve that will always set yourself well firstly it'll give you the best opportunity to succeed but secondly if you work hard enough it'll set you apart from other players and other lads that are all vying for the same thing as I say, fortune is massive in any player's career, especially a young player's career. There are so many, especially now, young players at academies, um, and it's brilliant to see. Without question, that's filtering into the England setups and why we're seeing success there because of the standard of coaching and facilities, et cetera, et cetera, scouts. That's without question making it even harder for young players to get through. However, with that being the case, working harder than the person next to you, challenging yourself to work harder than the person next to you, whether that be mm. practice hours, whether that be um, looking after your nutrition, looking after seeking people, as I talk about mental health, talking to people as best as you can to get yourself in the right mind, mind frame, whatever those little bits of percentages that can help along that route okay. will set you apart. All right, superb question here from Peter Hannon. A uh, question from Matt. How hard is it to keep your composure when the opposition feign getting fouled and who was the worst culprit that you played against? <laughs> oh, uh, well, I'm okay with stuff like keeping in, in keeping your composure and stuff. I try as best as I can to keep a, a level <laughs> keel on that. Never been sent off for anything aggressive. So, um, yeah, I'm more of a get up get up kind of a guy. So keep you in your composure. No problem with that. The worst one I've played with uh, or played against, sorry. Um, let's think. Uh, probably the worst one I've seen is your man uh, who's just left the other side of the city. He's probably the one, the worst one I've seen do it. Mm. Um, <laughs> the, the worst one You're not I've gonna be played. Alone there. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, Can I just he who, he who mate, must not be mate, named? Mate, that's what I'm calling him. Name, mate. <laughs> I'm not saying the name. You, <laughs> you are right up there now, mate. I promise you. Um, <laughs> but, I um, say it like that though, but I've, I've got a lot of affection and, and admiration for Dean Smith and, and Richard O'Kelly, who's just left there. So yeah. I say it tongue in cheek a little bit because although I shouldn't, I do admire what they do, and I played under Dean, so. Um, Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got a bit of kudos but on the second side of it I do really uh, by saying the first thing but the second side of it I've got a lot of admiration for Dean and what he's done so they've just gone back yeah it's right. gone back the other way again I know I know I shouldn't say it but I'm telling the truth he's a top top guy unfortunately he's a good guy I'll have the word five better word on it alright okay <laughs> It's B6, if you wish to refer to them. It's by the Coast Guard only, and that's as much respect as you get. <laughs> but divers, not not to come across too many, but I've seen a couple. Yeah. yeah. So, Matt, is your aspirations now to get into management yourself? I think I want to coach as high as I can possibly coach, and then wherever that takes me, uh, we'll see. I think it's very difficult to say that you want to be a manager and that you're going to be a manager because there are 92 jobs um, and 90, yeah, 92 jobs across the country and uh, and there's a lot of people vying for those jobs. So, and and talking about fortune as a player, fortune as a, as a manager definitely comes into it. So I would like to see myself and I would like to, sorry, challenge myself to be the best coach I can possibly be and then see where that takes me. Mm. Well, good luck with it all. No, cheers, uh, mate. A cross between Gary Barlow and Lee Evans. <laughs> bit rude. I don't know about the Lee Evans bit part. Bit rude. I'll go and get my. Uh, I'll go and get my big suit jacket on. <laughs> have, you, have you played for um, uh, Tom Ross's old boys yet? Off as well, mate. Matt, sorry. Uh, no, I haven't. Mike tried to get uh, Mike Taylor. That is, he tried to get me into uh, playing a couple of weeks ago, and I said, "Listen, I'm still registered as a player." So I don't think I should be going oh, and playing in no, 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 just the old no. boys' games. Just Although just Mike's no. obviously seen me train and thinks I should be going and playing in the old boys' games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sam says, uh, was it tough leaving Blues and did you play back at St Andrews with another club in your career? I played back there once uh, for Watford um, and lost 3-2. Um, <laughs> no, no, yeah. <laughs> Good two on goals. Um, no, uh and it was really difficult. I think I was 23, I think, at the time. And all I knew was Birmingham. That was where I'd been since, you know, eight years, seven years, whatever it was, years old. Um, fam- as I've said, Paul, family, friends, all from Birmingham. Um, that's my club. Uh, and I never realistically thought that I would ever leave the club. I didn't see it that way. Uh, I still had two years remaining on my contract when I left, um, probably two and a half years left on that. So it was, wasn't an easy decision, but um, it was Alec McLeish at the time and he kind of made it clear that I wasn't going to be part of the plans. So that was the first time that it then became real. Okay, yeah, you are going to gonna leave. And Matt, I don't know, the older me says, would you have stayed and fought you at your place because you've got a long contract still to go? Um, possibly. Um, but at the time, it was it felt like I should do that. Uh, we've we've been told that you weren't going to play, so uh, yeah, it, it was gutting at the time. I won't, you know, I won't not share that. That was that was really really tough, and I think I probably struggled for another two, three, four years. Talk about that identity thing. I think I struggled with the identity after that, thinking, you know, in my head, I was always going to be a one club player. Mm-hmm. Um, but when that changes, then all of a sudden. It, <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden it was, oof, right, okay. Uh, and probably did struggle for a few years after that. And then you refined yourself. So, yeah, th- definitely thought I was going to play for the club. For my question, made, right? You came back to St Andrews with Watford, right? I'm going to put you in a scenario, right? There's a corner, right? The big boys come up from the back. Mm-hmm. The ball comes over and you know you can easily score. Would you have duffed it? <laughs> <laughs> would I have duffed it? It depends what the score was. I don't think I would have duffed it to uh, <laughs> love it, to, mate. Love it. 
if, if we were three one up, I probably would have done to get him back in it. But if we were and <laughs> no, that's it's not difficult. Too many. Yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> you see, the thing is, again, I'm answering this as a player. So if we yeah. ever get if we ever get Birmingham in the cup and I am playing, then then all eyes will be on this conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Matt, well, can I take it back, Matt? Can I take it back to the 06 07 season for a minute and yeah. tell us your memories of that season? And because that was the season you played every game, wasn't it? More or less at left back beyond Gary McSheffrey. Yeah, that yeah. was the, my season, really. That was the, the time, you know. I um, the 36 uh, games, yeah, 36 yeah. league games that was. And then we had a cup run as well. We beat Newcastle yeah. up at Newcastle, That's right. 5 1, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, um, so that was brilliant. It was an amazing season. Um, Filled with ups and downs. I, again, there was a period where the gaffer was very close to getting the sack. Um, I think it was the Derby away game where we beat them one 0 and, and cleansed his. Yeah, yeah, it was the spawniest goal you ever yeah, saw. Yeah, I this. But it was the epitome of it. You know, sometimes I hear stories on the podcasts and stories of ex-players, and they say, or even on the radio, they say, just needs one to go in on his backside and then away you go, you go on a run. And it was exactly that. Yeah. I think we won yeah. the next 10 games and gone from mid-table to top of the league off the back of us spawning one on the, you know, in the one of the last minutes with Steve Clem. So it was a real roller coaster, but the the real um, overriding memory is that we had some real players in the team there. Oh, yeah. We had, you know, Nicholas Bentner, Incredible talent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seb Larson still played for Sweden now. Obviously, yes. Fabrice, yeah. he could have gone on and played for whatever if he hadn't have had the thing happen to him. Um, we were a really, really good team um, and it was a good place to play then. So, yeah, just memories, obviously amazing. Got promoted to the Premier League, which I probably did quite appreciate at the time. But, again, the overriding thing that I reflect on is the quality of player that were there. Definitely. Mm. Uh, Pete Taylor says, champions, yeah. Pete, Pete Taylor says yeah. he seems a level, in a level headed, intelligent guy. Oh, <laughs> well, just last year. Sorry, guys. Go on, Nick. Sorry. Was you talking, Chris? I was talking. Yeah, you're talking. Oh, right. He sorry, doesn't Nick, stop. Nick, he doesn't stop. Oh, Here no, is no, this is this, <laughs> one, this, one, this one's important. This one is because uh, Pete Taylor says he seems a level headed, intelligent guy. He's talking about oh, me, me, obviously. It, Oh, yeah, Matt. Oh, Matt. who the hell about there? <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Thank you, Pete. That's all I can say to that. I appreciate <laughs> I told you, it. I told you it was important, Nick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cheers, mate. Um, it, it, it is more difficult over Zoom as we experienced the other week when we were in the studio. Everything flowed. And it's really, really hard because you can only see one person's face at the time, and, and, mm. and you really you don't know whether somebody else wants to talk or it's right. You don't know I'm doing that, do you? It's sorry, sorry. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else can see except you. What's he doing? Press another button, Nick. You can press another button for more. Matt, Matt. 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 What, sorry, Nate? I just said there's another option on your... Oh, you want a phone, are you? Yeah, yeah. There's another option. You press a button and it'll give you all six of us on one screen so you can see all of us. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, God, it's only took him 18 months. 18 it's Steve months. Jobs is on here. Go on, Jobs, he sort it out. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear. I can either get four and three or, or nothing. So, I yeah. think the best for me, that, going back to that 06 07 season, Matt, that, that Seb Larson goal against Sheffield Wednesday. Oh. Just, oh, now, oh, yeah. Yeah. That, you you remember that? Incredible. I mean, the, the heat of the day, the fact we were down yeah. to 10 men. Sold out stadium. It was um, it was all set for us. If you were one of the teams that we were vying with for a promotion, I think it obviously it was Sunderland who ended up getting going up as top. I can't remember who was third. Can you? Uh, was it Derby? It was Derby. Steve Allen yeah. was there. The forward, I remember it well now. Yeah, yeah, Derby beat the Baggies in the playoff final. Didn't the final yeah, Pescadero yeah, scored, didn't they? That was. It. But um, it was uh, it was one of them where if you were watching on, you, you'd think. It was just meant to be that we got promoted that season um, yeah. because everything was stacked against us. And Seb would not have been renowned for a turn of pace, but I don't know what carried him. I don't know if it was the the wind that comes through between the 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 the, uh, the cop and the the you know the the uh, the <laughs> railway. I don't know yeah. if it was that, but it was something which carried him along that crest of a wave and uh, yeah. Yeah, at some moment. Unbelievable goal, yeah. I'm conscious we've only got 20 minutes left. And, um, we've got lots yeah. to get through. 
Have you done a one-to-one? That's my eleven? fault, though. That's my fault. That's all right. That's all right. We'll just, right. Take, no, no, just no, take no, it out your wages. You're not going to get. Have you done a one-to-eleven, <laughs> mate? Your, your picture blues one-to-eleven from players you played with. I haven't, but I can probably reel it off. Go I'll on. think about it and reel it off. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, number one would have to be Mike Taylor because he'd kill me if I didn't say him. <laughs> um, two would be Grange. Um, uh, sorry, number sorry, number three would be Grange. Two would be Kells. Um, centre backs would be without doubt. Um, well, I say without doubt. I say without doubt. It between uh, two of three. Steve Vickers would probably be a bit of a wild card in there, um, purely yeah. because of his. Um, he now he did look after me when I first came into the team, but then uh, without doubt, probably just top in Steve would be Matty Upson and uh, Kenny Cunningham. Kenny, unbelievable. Um, uh, he's just. I don't know if you've spoke to him on here or if anyone speaks about him, but no, he's get not him on. I'd love him. Get him on. Yeah, you've got to contact, man. I'll find you out one. If you need yeah, a contact for any person or any player, it's Mike Taylor. He will get anybody's number. Mm. So, yeah, mm. he's your All one. Right. Um, but, yeah, Kenny, unbelievable guy. Um, and then probably Dunny, midfield. Um, oh, yeah, great player. Dunny, uh, Jermaine Pennant, right side. Um, I've got to say McSheffrey, left side. Um, definitely Nicky Butt as well in there. Um, I pro- That's a strange yeah. one. Yeah, well, in terms of um, pedigree mm-hmm. and actual, um, you know, when you see him up close and you think, geez, what a player he is. Um, yeah. You know, a proper player. He played for 10, 15, well, however long he played for Man United, he was, he was a proper player, proper pro. Um, and then. Like Savage, Matt. Yeah, I mean, Sam was good. Obviously, he was incredible, in fact. But in terms of how I like to see a player, uh, that grit that he had, I'm, he said, I'm not a flary sort of a guy. And Sav was obviously a flary kind of a guy in terms of his flamboyance. Um, <laughs> so for me, sort of the earth, Nicky Butt. Um, and uh, I, I trained with Christoph. Dugarry, but you know the king. I, I trained with him. Didn't ever play a game with him, but having seen him train and trained with him, uh, the, I mean, he he was just. I, I again hear some ex players and players, whatever, talking about their experiences of other players, and he was just unbelievable. Him, yeah, he was yeah. in vision, touch, strength, just everything. Finishing, he was unbelievable. Um, and who else we've got one more I mean, Nicholas Bentner we'll go with him for the last one Nicholas oh. Bentner and Doug Gary up front yeah oh, some front to that eh? mm. that's a tough Maybe one down the right though isn't it yeah. Pennant or Larson yeah pardon I said that's a tough one down the right isn't it Pennant or Larson yeah it is yeah again Seb probably won't be happy with that but Jermaine was uh, he was um, again that raw ability that real talent he will be the first person to tell you now as an ex-player that he didn't apply if he did apply himself the way that he could have done he there's a I mean he ended up at Liverpool he's unbelievable talent um, yeah yeah he but, was good but that was just natural that was a natural talent whereas yeah, yeah. you know talk about hard work and all that if he'd have really applied every single grain of his being to his profession then uh, again I just it's just a hell of a player. Yeah, Who's your captain, captain, Matt. Pardon? Captain. Who's your captain? Kenny, no doubt. Kenny. Kenny. Yeah, Thank great you. player it was. And the manager? He was due to, uh, he's, uh, he's drained with COVID. So get well soon, Steve. Get well soon, Linda. Get well soon. All, all those folks that have uh, been struck down this awful, horrible illness, you know. Oh, yeah, God, oh, yeah. Terrible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, so who did yeah. you say, manager, Sorry. Matt? Uh, I'll be Steve Bruce, definitely. Bruce, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Definitely. Should we, um, no. should, we do, should we do the U? Uh, sorry? So what we do now, Matt, we're going to play a clip of a player talking that you've been in squads with. I'm not going to say you played with him because I could be wrong. <laughs> there was one last week. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't got another one in him. There you go. Um, and, uh, yeah, we want you to tell... If you think you know who it is, tell us the first letter of his surname, okay, and then we'll give our viewers a chance to have a bash and see if they can get him. Okay. Here we go. Stand by your beds. Being when I was young, my mum obviously told me the first steps I ever took was to stand up and walk to kick a football. So obviously, I think from the early stages of my childhood, 
I was always wanted to play football and I loved my football and everywhere I went, my football went with me. Mm, One obviously go. I touched on his farm. Oop. I don't know who that is. No idea. No idea. <laughs> Do one more. Give it once more, Chris. Paul, are you one. sure he played with him? Uh, yeah, this is what I'm worried about. It. It. I'm thinking it. about who he could be. Uh, okay, he's been in the same squad. I know he's been in the same squad. Okay. One more time. Okay. Here we go. Being when I was young, my mum obviously told me the first steps I ever took was to stand up and walk to kick a football. So obviously, I think from the early stages of my childhood. I'm I thinking he could be doing with a G. I loved my football and everywhere I went, my football went. Mm. A couple of people have got it as well. Well done to Steve Job and Dave Twine. Adam, any so, idea? So it's not I, a G. I can see their text. I can see that. I can't see the text, Paul. I have absolutely no idea whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> the it's... only one that comes to my mind, go on. Go on, go on. No, go on. No, go Let on, me have a guess. I thought it might be Julian Gray, but is that not who it is? That's it is. Correct. It is spot on. Yeah, there there we go. Go. Do you know you what? Played, you played with him, didn't you? Paul, is he the I first did, one to get one right? Hey? It's not the first one to get one right straight away. This season? Yes. This yeah. season, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. take that. Yeah. I'll take that. It was the second one that did it for me. The first one I didn't get it, but then I yeah. started really thinking, okay, yeah, it's Julian. Top of, yeah. top of the league, top of the yeah. league, yeah. yeah. Well played, well played. Fantastic. Well, okay, well, you well, ladies and gentlemen, boys, as you know, we're into the last 15 minutes and I've just come back from Paul in Dorset, literally drove in and four, five minutes later I'm on the show. Oh, look at these little kids, and they're not for the talk and talk boys either. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah, we'll get... Sharon did go into the shop and buy some sticks of rock and do you know what, ladies and gentlemen, she bought them for a woman whose husband is a fan of B6. Oh, of B6. Sake. Get she, did not, she did not get the tilt and talk team a stick of rock. So the last 15 minutes is gotcha. anything we'll find inside a sweet shop, ladies and gentlemen, and football. Off you go. Oh, <laughs> oh, God. Well, you not then. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm the humbug one for Christmas. Bar humbug. <laughs> <laughs> and you're... In Share it with you, boys. You haven't got one to kick us off, Nick, no? Oh, what, sorry? You haven't got one to kick us off with. Um, oh, ooh, um, yeah, uh, da, 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 um, yeah, no, um, but I'll think. Okay, um, Everton Mint from Michael Woods. Yeah. Everton Mint, yes, well very done. good. Well, no, done. Uh, the top is, oh, Everton again, the top is, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, Leicester 1 0 down, and they've also had as man sent off. Thanks, Nicholas Wellsbury, for the information. Uh, Otter, Otter Chocolate, <laughs> oh, no, again, Cream no, I'm not thinking about <laughs> Chris Mar, Chris Mars, Chris Mars, Dun, Chris Mars. It comes up, Chris Mars, Dun. <laughs> Smarty Granger. What about what about Nigel Squashy instead of Quasi? Yeah, that works. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. They're, they're, all, they're all coming now. Harry Bocain, uh, oh. Barry Fries, <laughs> Kenny Sherbutt. Yeah. Lots <laughs> of chocolate balls. Nicky Sherbutt. <laughs> Nigel Rio Cola Cubes. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel Rio Cola Cubes. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, Snickerless Bentner. Ah, nice. Yeah, uh, Ro remember. Robbie Flake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the best part of the show, Matt. Uh, uh, no, 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 it's not. You know, no. I could have properly heard what was going on, but I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed a lot of these names that are going on there. <laughs> I thought you'd just all gone a little bit mental. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm just reading them from the show box. Just keeps people on the happy and cheery side of life. Yeah. <laughs> John Terry's chocolate orange. <laughs> John Terry's chocolate orange. Whoa. Oh, so how, many, how, many, how many career goals have you scored? Do you know? Uh, you either 11 or 12. So not many. Uh, so well, not many. Decent. Not bad. I scored most of them since I've gone to centre half. To be honest with you, so I, sh I should have ditched left back a while ago. <laughs> lion, 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 lion bar Messi, lion or bar Messi, <laughs> lion or bar Messi. Yeah, Martin Skittles, <laughs> uh, David Boost, Richard <laughs> nice. Stickers, yeah, and Aneki Chunks. I don't think about that one. I think he's got that the wrong way around. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm going Alex Caramacleish. <laughs> Caramacleish. <laughs> Caramacleish. <laughs> Caramacleish. Do I you okay? <laughs> oh, that's Brian, a good one. What about, what about Bro Brian Clare instead of McClare? 
Oh, yeah, oh. Brian is there, yeah. Big seat. That's the best one I'm coming up with, I think. Yeah. You can <laughs> be talking on that one. Harry Candy Kane. You what, Nick? <laughs> What's next for uh, uh, for yourself, Matt? Sorry. Oh, um, well, I'm going to listen to you guys say really random chocolates out for the next couple of days. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> <laughs> That's the most pressing thing. Um, uh, yeah, well, uh, as I say, I think for me, it's my coaching journey now. Um, coaching, yeah. Yeah, the coaching journey, see where we go. Um, as I say, I really enjoy every day being on the grass. That's what I know. I've been very yeah. fortunate to do it for 20 years. So Wait. why not for another 20, eh? Yep, why not? Licorice what? Bentner. <laughs> Licorice, yeah, yeah. Listen, get up back to the north. Get down to the proper uh, yeah, This is more important. This is uh, true. Andy Colicol. Christoph de Toffy. Andy Colicol. Andy Colicol. Somebody called Adam Wilkes has put this one. Oberfemi <laughs> Mars tins. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, interesting. Yeah, cho- chocolate a la Brazils. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, Nick's going to have a Conroy. Oh, uh, Chris Brown chocolate. Oh, mm, chocolate. This, one's, this one's simple but effective, Danny Roses. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Danny. Yeah, it works. Yeah. <laughs> it does work, you're right, yeah, it works. <laughs> Um, Matt, who was your mentor down the blues? Who was my mentor? Yeah, who, who took you under the wing most? Um, ooh. I mean, there's a few good ones at the time. I, I think Kenny, as I mentioned him, he was brilliant. He's such a good guy. As I say, do whatever you can to get him on because he's such a such a good guy um, and a hell of a player as well. Um he did actually live in Solihull for, for some time, but I think he's gone back to Ireland now, I think. Um, so Kenny would be the first one without question. And then other ones, as I say, Steve Vickers, Jono, when Jono was here, he was always really good to speak to. Still see him every now and again now with his work at the FA. Um, Grange, you know, Grange was was really good. And I, I see him after a game a few years back. He, he was watching his boy. Um, is it Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. Goalkeeper, isn't yeah. He? yeah. yeah. He's a goalie, but he was at Orient at the time. And he was on, I think he was on the bench that day. And then, you know, walking out after the game and see Grange there. So it was really good to catch up with him. And he was as good as ever. Um, so, yeah, that, that was that's a real good group of people that we had over the whatever it was five or six years as a pro that I was, probably more than that, seven or eight years as a pro. Some mm. really, really good guys. Um, and especially at that period of transition when you go from being a young player to a, a trying to establish yourself a little bit. Um, you need good people around you and, and you don't get promoted out of mm. championship and stay in Premier League if you don't have good people around you. Did you, no, clean, anybody's, did you clean anybody's boots? We have got uh, a boot guy at, at, at the club, so that we've never had to do that. Mm. Sorry, Blues always had a boot guy at the club. Oh, right, OK. Um, so we've never had to do that. We, we had to do jobs at the time, which I don't think do now. So, you know, all the get your mannequins out and balls and all that. and yeah. You had to do the kit on match days and stuff like that. But um, no, boots were avoided, fortunately. Oh, right. Mm. Okay. <laughs> oh, Matt, have you got any... Matt, have you got any... Sorry, I was going to ask Matt if you had any blues sort of memorabilia around the house, like you know the promotion shirt and stuff like that. No, I've give, I give it. I talk about Dad being my hero. Dad's got everything that um, mm. that I've had, um, uh, and I, I kind of want it that way. You know, everything that I've had, he he has, and and um, and we'll stay with him for you know until time. But because that, I mean, that was such a it's such a bond that we that me and Dad had. He, you know, I talk about. It when I left, well, that was a little bit of me and his bond that was gone because that was blues, you know, mm-hmm. it was everything to us both. Mm-hmm. Um, but, he, you know, we look back at it and we reflect on it and every now and again, he pulls out the DVD of the promotion year. Yeah. Um, at Christmas and anniversaries, we do it most often. <laughs> uh, yeah. you, you've probably answered this one earlier, but uh, are you, who, who are you still good friends with of the blues squad? Um, so, but, 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 
obviously Mike. As, as in, I see Mike every single day, so he'd be the one who I, oh, you right, know, yeah, I speak yeah. to most re- most regularly. Yeah, um, he came. He came on. He was such. He yeah, was he such a one. laugh. Again. He's class, isn't he? He, yeah. he he's such brilliant. a good guy. He was brilliant. brilliant. He was. Brilliant. He's Jack and Ori, our Mike. He has yeah. got story after story. <laughs> um, so he's goalie, he's brilliant. goalie as well, wasn't he, Matt? Oh, it was great. Mike was. The, I say this to any young keeper or any keepers that I say that are under his tutelage now. He was the very best I ever saw at claiming crosses from corners. Hmm. He just. He was such a big, imposing guy. And he stretched his arms out ten feet in the air and pluck it out the air. Um, he's an angry man, like so. <laughs> I, I avoid him sometimes, but he's. Uh, he was <laughs> cracking at, at that side of things, but. Yeah, brilliant he was. Um, what was I was going to say? Oh, yes, who I see. Marcus, Painter, still see about. And yep. uh, obviously Kells, see him about. But and then it's just bumping into people. Tiny, he still lives in the area. Yeah. Uh, um, well. Has yeah. he come on? Has yeah, he been yeah, on before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tiny's been on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. talk Marcus, about being yeah. uh, level-headed and, and articulate. Tiny's your man. Jesus, he's, he's mastermind him. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Who, was yeah. The, who, who was the funniest you played with at Blues? You got any good stories you can tell us? Any pranks or any funny stories? No, the, 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 you wouldn't know any. Because I'd come through, probably the funniest person I ever met was a guy called Dwayne Courtney, who he was a youth team player at the time and he was off the scale funny. He, he was brilliant. Yeah. I don't know. Ed, probably no one's ever mentioned him before, but no. um, what a guy he was. But in terms of. The, the ones that people would know of it would uh, I remember we did um, back in the day then we had to do a Christmas pantomime and um, and so we had to do all that in front of, of the, the first team lads and that was as a first year scholar as he was then so as a 16 year old and we'd all have to do it and we ended up doing sketches um, and we did some of, I can't say some of the sketches obviously but some of them were Jesus. just unbelievable <laughs> sketches that would get done right to the core of people's like fabric of who they are we used to question and these sketches and there was like I, I've never seen it done before or since any club I've been at but it was incredible and uh, and that all the lads would proper all the first team lads would really buy into it and and I've, honestly I've just never seen a room like that do at any other time I've seen and done like Christmas stuff at the clubs or I don't know initiation songs <laughs> these pantomimes they're like Harry Enfield and chums that we were doing there they were unbelievable they were <laughs> Nick Nick I think it's time to wrap up mate yeah almost time to wrap up ladies and gents so just a few more. Uh... Uh, of the funniest come in uh, we've got Danny Roses Peter Sherbert Chocolate Alan Brazils which I quite like 5-0 mm-hmm. um, <laughs> celebrations I like that one Nigel man very well done to you um, let's go for this one Joe Loveheart Caramac Jerome oh uh, Gary Revel uh, we've got Ripelio I can't pronounce it so it doesn't matter Joe Lollipop <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Choco Laura Bassett I like that one Rolo Nando, uh, I still can't pronounce that yeah, one either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Martin Skittles, Mark Overmars, uh, Stan Fruit Salad, uh, 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 I can't remember that one. Steve Snickers, Ricky uh, Butt, uh, Tony Cotton Candy, Tony Cotton Candy, and uh, the last one we're going to do now is uh, Rodney Marsh Mellow. Oh no, Ricky Choco. <laughs> yeah, I like that one, Ricky Choco. Ricky right. Choco. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. 5 0 to Birmingham City the weekend, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Matthew Sadler on the show. Great to have you along with us tonight. Thanks for giving part of your Monday night up, mate, and uh, thanks for all the service that you gave to Birmingham City. The joy that you give us fans. Uh, you, you are part of our club, you're part of our fabric, you're part of our family, and you're part of our lives. And uh, we, we genuinely <laughs> on everybody that comes on the shows, right? Even Chris <laughs> Brown, honestly, we genuinely mean <laughs> it. And. Uh, <laughs> You know, what, what, being a Blues fan since, since well, conception, I think, but, you know, uh, I'll be That's 60. got to put me on a little bit of a pedestal. Well, but I will be 60 this Christmas Day, and I know I don't look it. I know that I no. don't look it. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. Okay, okay, true story, true story coming up. Alert, alert, everybody listen. Uh, my son's got COVID, he's a barber. My hair was in a disgusting state. I was in pool this morning, so I decided to walk in and get my hair cut. 
And this lady cut my hair. She stabbed me in the neck, ladies and gentlemen. She stabbed me in the neck and drew blood out of my body. And then she went up to the little counter right at the end and she says, just nine pounds for you, sir. <laughs> that was the guy. I hope you gave that her a ten pound tip. It was here to the OAP's price. She charged me OAP's rates. But <laughs> <laughs> you can get lost. <laughs> 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 well, Matt, again, cheers, mate. Honestly, part of the, part of the fabric. The fabric cheers, of the guys. Great to have you on. Great to be on. It's an no, absolute do, pleasure. We, we don't, do, don't do it for recognition. We don't do it for money. Uh, although, Chris Brown, I think we really have to be paid a thousand pounds a night for this, you know. <laughs> um, we do it because we love Birmingham City Football Club. Our club, our home, our life our passion, our dreams, our aspirations, our everything. Our Amen, history. Rev. Amen. Yeah, our history and our history. You, Matt, are lucky to be part of that history. Do you want to know something else? As a fan, I'm lucky to be part of that history because I've been there on the terraces shouting, screaming, crying, laughing, right? Paul Ipkiss is part of the history. Chris Brown... The other guys there, you, 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 you got Adam, uh, Adam Wilkes and uh, Mark, Mark Andrew Adams, and every single person that this is to this show is part of the history of Birmingham City. If you go, you're part of it because it is the best family in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, good night, God bless from all of us here at the Children Talk Show. Paul Hipkiss. Good night, all. Chris Brown. Good night. <laughs> Adam Wilkes. Good night, stay safe. And Mark Adams. Uh, good night, everyone, stay safe. And to all our friends who have caught this horrible, horrible COVID, get well soon, guys. We can't wait to see you all again and uh, give you all a look. And the last words from Matty. Off you go, mate. Oh, from me, oh, thanks for having me, guys. That was, uh, I was mesmerised by your words there, mate. What a passionate speech that was. Fantastic. <laughs> That's how, that's how the fans roll. That is brilliant. I really, is thoroughly it. enjoyed that. That is it. That is it. There is nothing more. We demand, as, as a player, we demand you give everything. Right? And you, as a player, demand that we give it all back. Right? And we certainly do that. We try our best. Yeah, brilliant, man. Really, thank you for having me on. You're doing it. Andrew's rocking again like it used to back in the day. We need to get St Andrews, that horrible, horrible place for away teams to come to. The cauldron. Call it the cauldron. Cauldron! Ladies and gentlemen, Matty Sadler, the Tilt Talk Show. Good night. Let's see you next week. We'll take care. Up the blues. Pull them. Yeah, let's wipe them. Let's wipe them. Wipe them. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.